Hello parents, welcome to Parent Connect. Today we're going to connect with the digital world and we really want you all to open your ears and pay close attention and listen as we talk with Mr. David Ackridge who is the Executive Manager for Information Technology for the Mobile County Public School System. Welcome Mr. Ackridge, thank you so much for being here with That's us. That's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Nice to have you here. It's great to be here today and I think, I think we've got a very important topic to discuss, uh, one that I'm kind of passionate about exactly. as a parent and mm -hmm. as a director in the mm -hmm. district over technology, so I think it's going to be a good show. <laughs> thank you. So, help us get started here. When we talk about digital and the digital world, what does that look like? It, it's I know it's going to um, actually come together from home and school. So digital, what are we talking about? So in the digital world, you're talking about uh, everything online. Uh, internet has become the, the sensation mm -hmm. in the past right. several years. And as it continues to grow in cloud uh, storage <laughs> and things begin to grow and, and how you're able to put your entire life and everything mm -hmm. in this digital world, we've almost created the, the physical world and the, and the digital world that just kind of coincide exactly. with each other and mm -hmm. uh, that's only going to continue to grow and, and you know as well as I do that mm -hmm. the digital world has made our entire world smaller. Exactly. You know, connecting yes. with mm -hmm. people that we've never connected before. That every day. The, right. the, the, the simplicity and the ease in which we can uh, send people things and collect mm -hmm. things and, and data. Uh, is miraculous. It's unbelievable, but there's a lot of downfall to that and a lot of problems with that. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. right? Because when you think about digital technology and where we are today, some of us were talking. We were trying to figure when was the first time with the school system you actually had access to an email account. Well, we're talking almost 20 years later, and when you talk about digital access, it's beyond email. Oh, yes. It, it's, it's way beyond that. So I know for the school system, we have our safety nets in place. What does that look like when you talk about having just school alone? Mm -hmm. So we're a BYOD district, mm -hmm. which means bring your own device. And, and in a lot of ways, we're kind of a hybrid. We have devices there in the school right. for students to have. And then students can bring their bring own their devices. Own. And it, it took quite a bit of planning, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of money and uh, <laughs> <I'm> technology <sure. laughs> to secure our network. Uh, we, we get a lot of funding from the federal government mm -hmm. to help us in E-rate funding to pay for our Internet access. And one of the guidelines, a SEPA guideline mm -hmm. that they call it, uh, is a child protection guideline that we have to filter our Internet, obviously. Right. And so a lot of measures are in place to filter our internet mm -hmm. uh, from unwanted sites, obvious sites exactly. that you can imagine. And so we, we filter those sites, but we go a step further with, with students bringing their devices from home. They can log into our network, and as they're logged in, uh, this security software mm -hmm. locks down mm -hmm. their machine so no one else can see their tablet or their oh. computer and it really cuts down on them being able to hack in mm -hmm. or, or to determine. Each other's yeah, devices. so it protects from that, but also isolating that machine protects our network from any kind of viruses mm -hmm. or malware or anything that's being brought from home. So a lot of those measures mm -hmm. have been put in place, and when they're inside on our network, they're blocked from social media sites like Facebook and Twitter oh. and you know, a lot of people say, well, those are learning things, but they can also be major distractions. And yes. there are alternatives. setting, it's going to be oh, more of a distraction. Right. Absolutely. For sure. And, and education has come up with alternative sites, uh, such as YouTube is blocked mm -hmm. here, but there's an educational side of YouTube yes, that we exactly. have open. Right. Uh, there are alternatives to Facebook that are educational side that teachers can use. Mm -hmm. So the tools that are available are, are quite substantial for them to be able to have alternatives right. to the main social networking mm -hmm. that's there. And, and that pe we're looking for, from school, the education piece, but we also know the social part. Um, there's a good and bad piece because they are going to connect because we want our students to be social in school. You mentioned the amount of funding that goes into it. We also know that um, being a digital person and keeping up, about how many students bring their own devices? So it varies. We have between 20 and 25,000 devices That's that are logging in today. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
we, we realize that a lot of that is students bring in their, uh, their cell phones or their mm -hmm. tablets or things of that nature, and, and not all of that's used in the classroom setting. And our curriculum group for technology is working mm -hmm. very hard mm -hmm. to get our teachers to uh, engage that technology in the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's very difficult. Uh, it's going to take a lot of work for us to right. do that. But we do have quite a bit of students that are logging in every day, which is exciting. Kids, no, that is exciting. And the kids that log in, they've signed or the parents have signed um, some type of letter authorizing or giving their kids permission to be on the internet? On the pre-registration mm -hmm. that we do, the online pre-registration, there's actually a checkbox mm -hmm. there that they have to check, understanding that the students are going to follow the code of conduct, mm -hmm. and there's a big section in there mm -hmm. on using the cell phones or using uh, any type of device mm -hmm. properly. And that's something that hasn't been there in the past, but no. because of the digital world, it's a piece that has mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually had a group that met that looked at other school districts' digital mm -hmm. uh, code of conduct, and we worked on that, put that together, and it's ever-expanding as the as digital, the times, yes. <laughs> right. as the right. digital world update. changes. So mm -hmm. it, it's definitely moving forward. And as I said before, that footprint inside the schools is just going to continue to get larger and larger as these devices just continue mm -hmm. to take over and move forward. So. We've got to be ready for it. Exactly. Parents, when we come back, we're going to see just how ready we are as parents for the digital world. The more parents are involved in school, the more likely it is a child will succeed. Children with involved parents and attend school regularly make better grades and have better social skills. Every involved parent makes a difference. Get involved. Ask about your child's day. Explain how your education matters. Parent involvement, it matters. You can find more information on parent involvement at mcpss.com. As Alabama's first and largest school system, Mobile County Public Schools prides itself on the high quality of education we provide our students. We have been successful over the years in raising our graduation rates. And have been recognized nationally for closing achievement gaps. We believe that our primary focus is to educate all students to become productive citizens. This is our commitment to them and to you. Welcome back parents. Now let's see how much we know and I know I'm on a learning curve but there are certain things that we should know as parents when it comes to digital technology and, and before break we talked about signing on the registration um, site. There are some parents that allow their kids to sign. So as a parent, you may not even know no. that, hey, I'm giving access, permission for my child to, to follow all the of these rules every and day. do this. So just basically, because I know there's so much. What are some basic rules that you would say to me as a parent before I even commit to anything that I need to be mm -hmm. familiar be aware with? Of. Well, obviously, if we're looking at a school setting, when you're pre-registering, it would be smart to go online to get mm -hmm. the student code of conduct. I mean, there are other things in there that you probably need to know that's, that's dressing and right. uniforms and that, so many things that mm -hmm. parents need to know about. Our section in there talks about, you know, it's okay, a lot of people don't realize it's okay for a student to bring a cell phone to school, but mm -hmm. if it's not being used for educational purposes, it needs to be put away mm -hmm. in a book leave bag. Leave it at home. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of parents don't want you to leave it at home because now we've become so connected. Oh, that's right. that's Par true. Parents know mm -hmm. that, hey, there's a situation going on at school or, mm -hmm. or something changes at home, mm -hmm. I can send you something real quick and I can reach. And now taking that away once we have it yeah. is very, it is very, very difficult. Yes, to go back. And so we, we really don't, as a school district, say don't bring them, but you just they don't need to be a distraction and exactly. they only need to be out and being used in case in of an emergency classroom. or mm -hmm. in a classroom mm -hmm. if right. the teacher gives you. And, and those are the kind of things that's in the student code of conduct so that when your student is caught texting or mm -hmm. videoing or doing something that's not, you know, that's outside of that you code of conduct. You don't say, well, I didn't know that. Exactly. Yes, so you did. as a parent, you really need mm -hmm. to, and, and it's not a heavy read for that section, but probably need to look over those. And then just be aware. I mean, you know, one of the biggest things that I had to learn as a parent was just to be involved. Mm -hmm. You know, asking your, your student, 
or your child questions about you know what they did in school today exactly. and, and just kind of be involved and see involved. if the technology is being used there and, and, and I think you'd be surprised at the answers that you would get from them. Mm -hmm. Exactly because we do have a generation of parents that may not be that knowledgeable of an iPhone or you know when you talk about technology how it's being used and that would be a great parent involvement piece because it's we're, you're teaching me something. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that way I can find out what you're doing and also um, when you talk about teaching something and I've taught you how to behave, ask questions, respect. What t when you talk about the digital world, what does that respect look like? Or is there such a thing? Well, mm -hmm. what we try to, what, what we've kind of coined, and we didn't make this up in, in our division, but what we've heard in places as we've traveled, uh, digital citizenship is what we've coined. So what, what would you it define that? So, so think about those of us like me that are 50, 51, grew up, you know, late <laughs> 60s throughout the 70s before this was ever even exactly. thought of. Mm -hmm. You think about your parents, especially here in the South. I think about uh, how we teach here in the South, you know, to say yes, yes ma'am and yes sir. Mm -hmm. And you're polite and, and you, you, your parents taught you at a very early age uh, how to act in society, how you react to situations, exactly. how, you, Manners, how mm -hmm. you talk to older adults right. and, and how, you know, the polite way to speak and the language that you mm -hmm. use and all of those things, you know, I can sit here and think about all of those things that mm -hmm. my mother and father taught and you me. learn from your parents. Right. And, right. and if you think about how much time was involved in that, mm -hmm. I mean, there was an inordinate amount of time that was mm -hmm. involved in your parents sure. working on your social interactions. Well, every day face to face. Every day. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now, fast forward to 2017. We give you a phone. Where <laughs> you're you know, I'm trying to do something. My parents here. give me a phone, and all of a sudden, I have a whole other world that's here inside this device. Mm -hmm. And inside that device, if you really think about it, I need the same type of social skills, social interaction, the same politeness, mm -hmm. the same human interactions that I have in the real world need to be done here. But a lot of On times the they're internet. not mm -hmm. followed because exactly. I'm behind a phone and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm anonymous because I'm not using my real name and therefore I feel I can act any way More I want powerful. to act. There's, you know and what? Parents aren't really true. Parents aren't really watching what they're doing anyway. Exactly. They're busy doing something else. Here's the phone, quit crying, play for a minute. And they're not aware of what it is that they're doing on the internet anyway. And you know one other thing? It's we feel like we need to start teaching them how to be online when they're 8, 9, 10. No. That's right. When I did your totally parents agree. start mm -hmm. teaching right. you about how manners to... Manners. Mm -hmm. Your manners was taught at a very, very young mm -hmm. age. How many times have we been in a restaurant and we see kids in high chairs that are using these phones? Yes. <laughs> but you know, thinking about what you said, I can remember, I'm from your generation, I don't remember talking on the phone with friends until maybe middle school. Right. You didn't you just, that was not mm -hmm. something that you did. And... You could only talk so long, and if your parents are on the phone, you definitely didn't there interrupt them. There was limits them. to right. it. Right, but mm -hmm. now there are no, there are no limits to Well, it. we were talking before the show that, you know, as a parent in our busy lives, and we've got little ones that are mm -hmm. hanging on to our legs, and they're, you know, and we, we've got these phones in our hand, and we're talking, right. and a lot of times, just to keep them occupied, we'll just hand them the phone. Hand them mm -hmm. the phone. But this is unobstructed access to the internet if you haven't put any so kind of parent controls things. on this. Uh, yeah. Now, if you think about for a minute the, the, the text messages that you may be gotten from a friend at work or if mm -hmm. you see a site or something that may not be appropriate for a four or five year old yeah. to see, yeah. and you're just handing this phone. And sometimes I think that we underestimate their ability to operate these. They've been born with these. Yes. They so their their mode they of operation exactly. through everything. It's not a problem for them. And so I think it, if we think about we're handing them the world at their hands, they can be exposed I'm to things that they really do not need exactly. to be exposed to. And I think as parents we need to be very careful of that. Very diligent. Uh, but, you know, I I was fortunate that my kids was on the upper end of middle and high school before these became, but a parent today has to deal with this from the standpoint of an elementary or even a pre-elementary Toddler. Exactly. And, exactly. and you've just got to be careful. Uh, your Facebook 
Uh, I, my sister one time had a post on Facebook and she didn't know how it got there. And it <laughs> happened to be her little toddler son had pushed mm -hmm. a few buttons and, and had that posted was it. something. Yeah, that was it. So you got to be careful. Exactly. With them. So, parents, when we come back, we're going to see and talk about just how careful we are. And we're going to talk some about digital citizenship within the schools, but then also what are some things that we can do to be a part of digital citizenship as parents? Thank you. The Mobile County Public School Signature Academies program offers a variety of specialized curriculum for highly interested and motivated students. These academies provide students with choices ranging from aviation to healthcare, advanced information technology to international studies, from engineering to coastal studies. These high quality hands-on programs prepare students for careers readily available in Mobile County. Signature Academies program, it starts with us. Welcome back, parents. Now, Mr. Ackridge, I need to know, in order for me to be a citizen in the digital world, Carmen, mm -hmm. don't you agree? What, yes. What can we do? What are some tips? What are some things that we need to do? What are we supposed to already know <laughs> that we don't? First thing is get, in, get involved with what's mm -hmm. going on with your student. I mean, just don't hand them a phone. I mean, if you've bought your uh, elementary school age student or middle school age student mm -hmm. a phone uh, and I'm talking about a smartphone it's amazing mm -hmm. to me the middle school kids that have these thousand dollar phones but some of them do <laughs> wow. but you know if you handed them this phone the mm -hmm. first thing that you need to understand as a parent is I need to be involved in them using this device right. be aware um, what they're doing if I'm a parent that doesn't know how to use these phones then I don't know that I would hand so one of these off. You can't check up on them. You I think, I think the them. first thing I do is if I go to Verizon or AT&T and get one, I get one for myself. Exactly. And I learn, use it first. I learn how to use this as I'm handing this over. Mm -hmm. And then I interact and I work. Uh, one of the things that I did on social media, uh, my, my kids, when they were on Facebook and Twitter, I was friends with yeah, their with friends well. mm -hmm. wow. and I, well I was at yeah actually friends with them but I was actually even friends with some of their older friends mm -hmm. which probably is frowned upon today <laughs> but you know I did what I could do to exactly. make sure Stay I was staying mm -hmm. involved mm -hmm. and then you know they could work their way around certain things but there was always in the back of their mind dad was watching mm -hmm. even if he may not see this he might see this so I think the, one of the big things is to get involved. Mm -hmm. Take the phone from them once in a while. Have them log in and just look around. Exactly. You have um, the right as a parent. I think sometimes parents get nervous and feel that mm -hmm. they're going to upset their teenager. It really doesn't matter at this point. You're and you, the adult. You're the parent. I, that is that is. And a, you pay for the for the bill. Thank you. That <laughs> so is a that I is a great point. I get to go all point. through your phone and see everything that's on it. I, I think until your student is out of your home and paying their own cell phone bill, you have every right while you're paying to this. To go through it and parent. see what all they're doing. And set the guidelines. Mm -hmm. And set the guidelines. And and uh, you would probably be surprised how much stuff they use during the day. They don't have time to erase it all and get. So I really think you know one of the guidelines is here. I'm going to let you use this, but once every week or twice a mm -hmm. week, there's going to be a spot check, and I'm going to have to look and see. And I think that just gets them operating in the back of their mm -hmm. mind. I have to work. And and one of the rules that I use as a as an adult, mm -hmm. um, I, I I constantly go under the assumption that somebody's watching, somebody's looking at every text, every email, every picture, everything I post. And I think if you go with that mindset, uh, you're going to be a lot it safer. It keeps things more appropriate. And, mm -hmm. and I, you know, you mentioned, uh, I think we were talking off camera about students don't realize in that citizenship, it's mm -hmm. not so much to 
help from offending anybody or doing anything like that. The problem is, is, is you have to be careful what you post for future employees looking at things yes. or mm -hmm. uh, something that you do in the access to it. Something it's that you do in the spur there. of the moment that's, that's going to be there for really the digital. You have exactly. a digital mm -hmm. resume and you don't realize. And that's called your digital footprint. Digital oh. footprint. That's like your that. digital like footprint, that. and okay. you start it from the time that you become in the digital age on social media. That footprint builds, and it never goes away. And so you do something really wow. stupid at one point in time, it's it on stays there forever. With you. It's not like it can be redacted mm -hmm. or taken away in seven or eight years. I, you know, and I think one of the next things that a parent could do is look into some type of parental app. Mm -hmm. um, I've looked at a bunch of them, AT&T, Verizon, they all have programs that you can put on there, run between four and five dollars a month. Some of the things that you can do are free. But in research, and one of the ones that I found was a program called MM Guardian, mm -hmm. and it's just, uh, if you look online, it's just MM and the word Guardian all together. Mm -hmm. And that particular program runs about $2 a month, or I think you can pay $65 for a lifetime oh, of that. That's not bad. And, wow. and so mm -hmm. what that does is allows parents to set up a, a profile, and on the student's phone, they can lock down the types of apps that they install. They can even look at the text messages. Search they can history. Search history. Uh, they can have it pre-approved where if they download an app, the parent has to approve it first That's before right, it's installed right. to the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, they can lock down times at night. You know, this is something we haven't talked about. A nighttime, say eight or eight or nine o'clock mm -hmm. and students are going to bed, you're thinking they're in bed and they're under oh, the sheets no, with these phones. The they're on their so, texting online. You know, there's a way to completely oh, lock yes. these phones out during that time where they can't even come on until a certain exactly. time. Exactly, so, and, and I think they need that. That they do, they yeah. do, because you're online and you're in front of a screen all day long. Mm -hmm. Well, and they, there's research going on now talking about the the, the bad right. that's happening screen with down. the screens that are there before going to bed. It really hurts us in trying to sleep. Mm -hmm. and, so a lot of research is going on with that now, but uh, I, I think that's a program to look into that seemed to be very cost efficient. Uh, you know, I always like to try to find something that's free because mm -hmm. as a parent, I always it. wanted something yes, that was we free. we always need that break. <laughs> that appeared to be a very, uh, very inexpensive app that you can install. And then, like I said, AT&T and Verizon, especially on iPhones, has mm -hmm. a lot of lockdowns that you can do from the app directory uh, where you mm -hmm. purchase the apps you can lock phone. down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, parents, I don't know about you all, but <laughs> I need to check my digital footprint. And I think that's important because you're interacting with other people and like you were saying, the citizenship piece is respect for each other. I may not want my picture mm -hmm. posted or a comment made or you retract, you know, repeating something I've said. Well, there's been a lot of comments lately uh, you can read online about a lot of people who've been fired, a lot of people mm -hmm. who didn't get specific jobs because companies have gone online to look at profiles in Facebook and other social media I had a friend that sites. told me that from a job interview that mm -hmm. she went. They asked for her Facebook account name right. so they could look through it and see what all she was exactly. liking or not liking. Right. Exactly. Well, parents, when we come back, we're going to wrap up and talk about, so what is MCPSS doing when it comes to digital citizenship? Thank you. It's a fact. Bullying happens. Bullying can lead to serious physical and emotional pain. But there are some things you can do to prevent or stop it. Stand up for the person who's being bullied. Let the bully know that it's not cool to pick on others. Take action by reporting the bully to a teacher or principal. In the end, when you help someone who's being bullied, you are also helping yourself. To be in the AP program, it not only offers you great opportunities in the classroom, but also outside. Like being a member of the AP program, I can come into college already being a sophomore in college, so I can completely skip one year just by completing all my AP credits and by taking the classes and passing the exams. I would recommend other students to take AP classes because being a member of the program offers so many benefits and helps you decide what you want to do in the future and where you want to go with your life. I'm Mac McElroy and I'm a junior here at Baker High School. My future plans after I graduate high school are to go to Auburn University and get a mechanical engineering degree. And taking the AP courses could help me get credits to decrease the amount of time I had to be in college. 
Baker High School has prepared me for college, career, and life readiness by allowing me to participate in these clubs and classes that I'm taking now. Parents, we've learned a lot about digital citizenship and some things that we need to know and what we need to do. Sure. <laughs> so MCPSS, what are we doing when it comes to digital citizenship within our school system? So part of our SEPA guidelines mm -hmm. that we have to perform each year uh, for our federal funding, we put together, there's a program that each student goes through. Uh, there's some online courses and things. Uh, the school would know about those. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're required to, to go through that even at a very early years of, you Elementary. know. Elementary. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and like I said before, you have to think about it kind of paralleled. You know, we, we learn in society young. We need to, right. their minds mm -hmm. are ready while to accept that well. while they're young. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing that. And then, you know, we, we're we emphasizing right now, in especially in career tech and other areas, you know, the importance of making sure your footprint online is the way it should be. And Which you would be proud of. <laughs> exactly, uh, because it's part of getting a job. It's mm -hmm. part of, and more and more jobs are doing that online search, mm -hmm. and they're looking future. for you. Right. Uh, they're looking at that digital footprint. Mm -hmm. And so you need to start young making sure that you keep it clean and mm -hmm. keep it where it needs exactly. to be. Post your things that you've done great, the things that you're proud mm -hmm. of, those things that can build you up in your job. And so uh, we're, we're working with students on that. And then, you know, I think we've discussed we need to move ahead with some parent training exactly. and helping parents. Exactly. Uh, we work. parents are not aware at all what's going on on the internet with our kids. No, and it's a scary topic. Mm -hmm. I mean, really but, but you know, it's something that we can't just sweep under the rug. Mm -hmm. we, no. we, we can't just say, here, take the phone. I don't care what, as and parents. Think, that's the thing, as a parent, you always think about the internet and one thing. Oh, it's gonna be a predator. or Somebody's gonna be bullying your child. Exactly. But there's so much more than just that. Yeah. You, and they're, they just don't know. You just need to keep telling yourself as a parent, my child has un, obstructed the access world to the world mm -hmm. on a device this small. Mm -hmm. And when you keep saying that and you think about this world that we live in today, exactly. it will, I think, cause you to want to do something. Mm -hmm. Make a change. Exactly. And I think we're at the point where, like you were saying, the outside world, the real world, you they know, need to get closer. Exactly. And we've got to learn the language. We've got to learn the access, the questions to ask because our students are able to get it right there. Right, so we don't ever want to neglect our physical world. Mm -hmm. uh, we want our social skills to grow there, mm -hmm. but I think ever more present is our digital world is growing. It's gonna to continue to grow. We live in that society. Exactly. Yep. exactly. And we need to build, just like we built the social skills and things that mm -hmm. we built in the real world, we have to start building those in our young students and our children and as parents that's where it starts. I mean, it. Exactly. You know, the school system plays a big part in mm -hmm. it, but I think it starts at home way before oh, they definitely. come you to us. You have to be aware. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So next time you've got that phone and you've got the little toddler and you hand it to him, well, think, think about, about it. <laughs> think what think you're about. handing them. Yeah, that's exactly. exactly right. Think about it. Think and and about look it. at some parental controls and things on your students, and uh, they'll be upset. But I think in the long run. Uh, it'll be well much better for them. I think so. Well, thank you, parents, for joining us today. Um, I know for myself, it has as truly well as been a me, great I've segment. learned a lot. <laughs> exactly. Need to keep a better eye on my son when he's online. <laughs> thank you. So, as we move forward with digital citizenship, we appreciate you all being with us today, and look forward to seeing you again soon.